what happens when attorneys conversate is is a lot of times productive um, in terms of I, I don't know many attorneys who are say are, are going to go in with a straight face and say, hey, there should be zero contact. It happens. It happens far too frequently, but it, it's I hate to say it, but I, I'll say it. Some of our peers, I think they'll sell any bill of goods to any human to get them to sign on the dotted line and pay them money. Um, and, and so I think the biggest question I always tell people, I tell clients who come through me, they're like, how many cases have you litigated? How many times have you went to trial? And I was like, you know, you should really be looking for someone who is a very, very good negotiator because 90% of these cases are going to end well before a final trial. Absolutely. Um, and we know that statistically is true. Um, and I think having an attorney is where negotiations begin because if, if you find yourself as a pro per trying to pick up and negotiate with an attorney, um, that would be the equivalent of a patient who needs a triple bypass trying to call a specialist who works for the person trying to prevent the triple bypass and asking them for medical advice and trying to figure out why their own triple bypass surgery isn't going well. In other words, you need someone who understands the law, who who gives you a buffer because you also don't want to say the wrong things to the wrong person um, because that could get documented and make it its way into court. And you just have to be very, very careful as you navigate. And one of the you know, fundamental things you do by educating your client on the law, by upholding the law, is by teaching them how to honor the law. So sometimes it is about helping them navigate things like talking parents or our family wizard, the cueing them into why it is so important to communicate with the other co-parent. And as you know, we've seen it so many times where people just kind of justify trying to isolate the other parent because they have so much hatred and resentment build up. And you know, it's so easy to detect when we're in court uh, from the eyes of the attorney and the judge. And so you never want to go in raw like that, just who you are thinking the truth is going to set you free. Oh, no, you need a representative to protect you, to help teach you what to do, what not to do, and never interrupt your attorney in court. Make sure if your attorney is doing all the speaking for you, you've got a great attorney. You do. I'll, I'll say that. I'll, I'll pull this one up because we got a comment here that that's super relevant to what what you said. And so, um, Shim here, I have been in court by myself, thinking truth and documentation would show what it uh, what has been happening. Um, so, comment in terms of uh, what your your dialogue you just had. Um, if a dad is representing themselves. Uh, what can they do? What what are kind of some of the best tips you can give? And then parlaying that into if you have representation, what t this type of information can do. Right. So, you know, if you're representing yourself, um, then what you can do is take a little time in the self-help center talking to the attorneys that are hired by the courts to help you. So the question doesn't become what's the truth, right? Because truth actually is very subjective, right? We see the truth through the eyes of the beholder, right? But the reality is that there's only one truth in family court, and that is one person, one judge who knows the law back and forth, right? Who's looking for your half-truths, your mistruths your hyperboles, your exaggerations, right? Because once you lose credibility, even inadvertently, because you thought you were telling the truth and the mom shows the counterpoints, what you're doing is you're losing credibility, right? And because you're pro per and representing yourself and thinking the truth shall set you free, you're, you're talking way too much. You're trying to show way too much and it's probably not in the right words because words matter in court to establish certain like causes of action, certain statutes we're using um, to determine the best interests of the child. So, you know, take a step back, right? And realize if you're doing this yourself, you're in danger, okay? 
if there's no other capability, and we'll talk about other options because this can't be true, but if there's no other possibility, right, for you to represent yourself, what you need to do is laser focus, meaning you've got to compartmentalize your interests and focus on the best interests of the child, not how you feel, right? but on the through the perspective of how do we ensure that this child has the best life outcome so cuz that's what the judge is focusing on who has health insurance who takes the child to school right who's getting therapy when the child shows distress over the prolonged parental conflict <clears throat> who's getting the IEPs done and communicating with the teachers Meaning laser focused on the best interests of the child. And that might mean you do something that's contrary to everything you feel. Because one of the big things that people miss when they're in court representing themselves is that the purpose of telling your story in court is not to punish the other parent. It's not a reward punishment system. A lot of people do a lot of things wrong as a parent and they're forgiven and you see things move right on by. So maybe you have to consider, how, what should I do to change the outcome here? And maybe that involves me getting some parenting classes, me getting some therapy, because I don't like the way this person did me wrong in the relationship. Maybe I need to focus on my own self-help, how to forgive, so that I can rebuild proper, civil, respectful, child-focused communication with the other parent. That's the perspective that a judge is having. Who's dysfunctioning? Who's centered on the child? And what's the truth about how this child is feeling and thinking and experiencing life with these two people? Yeah, that's that's a lot of gold right there um, for for the uh, for for all of our viewers there. 